Hi guys, I'm Alex from Gear for Music, and we're in the studio today with Simon, Ableton certified trainer, and he's here to tell us about the Push and the new Beat Tools pack. So tell me a little bit about it and why you've decided to launch it. Okay, the Beat Tools pack is pretty much specifically aimed at uh, hip hop, trap music. Um, it doesn't have to be used for that, but that's pretty much the idea. And as the title suggests, Beat Tools, it's to make beats, grooves, to just get started really quickly, really easily. Um, a lot of the more complicated stuff is, is like under the hood. Yep. You can just literally select the sounds, find something you like, and just tweak and create. The idea is to get ideas down quickly and have decent quality sounds. So, so this is something which is included with the Push 2 then. So if I buy a Push 2, I'm going to get this Beat Tools pack. Yeah, pretty much all you need to do is just register your Push and you can download it straight away from your uh, Ableton Live account. Fantastic. So basically it means that if you buy an Ableton Push 2, you can start making music straight away out of the box. Cool, and this is made up from things like um, drum racks and instrument racks? Yeah, there's over a hundred drum and instrument racks all together. Uh, for those people unfamiliar to the platform, uh, drum racks and instrument racks are just a way of combining sounds and layering sounds together. Um, so, I mean, for sound designers who want to get deep into it, you can explore through the sounds, take elements out and customize them even further. But um, for those people who are just quite new, who just want to get in there making music, we've made it sort of really accessible to make good quality sounds. So there's plenty to choose from. We've got samples, MIDI clips, um, however you want to work really. We've kind of catered for the different sort of workflows that are quite common to push and Ableton Live. And also these, these packs, uh, they also have effects in there as well, so it's quite tweakable with the different effects that you can use. Yeah, yeah so for effects, uh, again, they've been tailored to um, do quite uh, typical things for the genre, like sort of filter sweeps, stutters, right. uh, really accessible. You can put them on the master track to get an overall kind of DJ sort of vibe, or you can p choose a particular instrument and add them to that. They're all quite accessible from the browser and just under audio effects. And it's all within the pack. And when I go through the stuff uh, later, you'll see the quite clear categories. So you've told me why you've created the pack. Do you want to show me some of the sounds that it's got in included in it? Yeah, sure. I mean, straight away what I'll do, um, add a track which takes us into this, so you can see where we need to go. And what I'll do is I'll go straight into Packs, because that's where it'll be located. And we're going to go to Beat Tools. So you can see here you've got drums, effects rack, samples, and sounds. So Sounds has all your different instruments there. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use a sample first, because I, I went through these and I found this one in particular like. So Loops and Chords, and it was under Music Loops. So again, you can just browse really quickly. You can move up and down like this if you want. Um, so in fact, I want the guitar one. So you get a nice preview there. And you can probably make a track with each one of these because good idea. So I heard this one, I think down here, this one. And I just like that. So I hit load. And so what it gives me now, this is um, our classic view in Simpler. Right. So Simpler is our simple sampler. And this will be C3. So if you notice straight away, the tempo is faster because the actual original sample was 85 BPM and we're at 120. So if I move this down, it warps, which is the, what um, Ableton Live does to samples, and it allows you to play same pitch at a different speed. And then you can play this, different pitches. But what I want to do for this one is I want to make it, I want to slice it up so I can make a rhythm with the same uh, this pitch, and I just want to be able to access the sample from different points. So to use that, I'm going to change the mode here to our slicing mode. So this is a little bit like what the hip hop producers would have done, Absolutely. but under sort of old samplers. Yeah, exactly that. You would load a sample up, and you can slice it in real time. Now, by uh, the first one is transient. So transient, it looks at the waveform and it slices it every time. There's like a peak of activity yeah. in there. I mean, this is ideal for when you're slicing drums because it's picking up those uh, different absolutely. drum sounds very easily. Yeah, drums, but it can be anything. It recognizes the rhythm in anything. So in this case, um, it was kind of like, you know, just sort of pulsating up and down. Right. There's no definite beats, really. So just cut it up like that. What I want to do is uh, slice it by beats. So because this was a two-bar pattern, I'm going to slice it by quarters. So yep. basically, I'm going to get eight boxes. So now that if I play it like this, that's the whole sample. But, you know, I wouldn't just play it like that because that's just what it did anyway. So yeah. I'm using it to access this sample 
at every quarter note. So in this case, I was jamming around with this sample and I went to go. So once you've got it sliced like that, you can play around with that and I could sequence that and put it together and do something that I like to like sort of start my track off. So it actually allows you to make your own sort of arrangement with the sample? Yeah, you can take any sample, any sound, um, in this case from the Beats pack of the Beat Tools pack, I've used uh, a guitar, cut it up so I can access it from any point. So I'm probably going to use that as a start of one of my tracks or an idea. So you've shown us a single sound and how you can cut that up and, and create your own different melody or a lead line. Do yep. you want to show me how you'd start with the drums then, drum racks? Yeah, sure. I mean, some people do start off with drums. In this case, that I felt strongly about that riff. Yeah. So in my head, you know, the beat was always playing. So um, yeah, so I'm on the Beat Tools pack here again, and then I'll just browse over. So drums, I'm going to select, and you get a preview of the kit. Uh, the preview you get is what that kit sounds like. Yeah. So where the kicks and the snares sound like, things like that. I kind of like this one, the Abyss kit. So when I hit load, it loads. This is one of our drum racks. And if you're new to Ableton Live, each one of these pads is a separate sound and it can be treated quite differently in any ways. Um, and you can have basically 128 of these. Um, just concentrating on 16 to populate these pads. So here you've got kick there snare and if I hit play there's my um, clip from before which I created and then I can just hit this and record it so what I'm going to do um, I've got my fixed length set to two bars so I know as soon as I hit record it's going to play to two bar clip right. and I'm going to populate that clip you can see here now it's going round I'm just going to put a kick and snare down and that'll just play it straight back to me if I'm not so confident about the time, I can press quantize, hit it down, quantize it, just cool. to keep it a bit tight. So I can build from that, that's just a kick and snare. So what I'm going to do, if I press duplicate, I'm going to keep that version, okay. make another. So on the screen, it's made another copy, so I can then do stuff with it. I think you the can idea, start building variations up then. Exactly. What I would do is just get your initial idea down, keep it, move on, add to it. There's a delete button, but there's no create button. Just yeah. get your ideas down, you can edit later. So that's that now. So let's get some hi-hats on here. Now the way that um, push works, you can draw these on, so you can just do something like this. I'm just hitting those, and they'll be in time because this is filling up one bar there. Um, we've got it on two actually. So this will just fill the time up and you can turn the notes on and off if you like. You know, that ain't, that's not so bad, that's not so bad, but you know, you can do what you want. So in this case, I'm going to duplicate, I'll keep that, yep. press duplicate, and this time if I hold delete down, I'm just going to get rid of the hi-hats. Right. There are various methods to do this, uh, lots of ways to push, that's why it's so great for getting ideas down. But this is one that's a favourite and also keeps in with a hip-hop vibe, something that... Um, was a common feature of the Akai MPC, the, the hip hop beat making machine from back in the day. And what you can do, it's a repeat button. So if I hit this now, and currently it's repeating eighth notes, and it's called the push, because if you push it harder, you get, you know, the dynamics are a bit yeah. easier to um, pick up. So what I'm gonna do now, it's on 16th notes. So if I press play here, I can play this, and I can just kind of rock that backwards and forwards. If I hit record now, it will record me playing it. So I'll go one, two, three, four. And take that record, and now I've got a pattern. Now I'm gonna use that repeat again. I'm gonna duplicate that pattern, and I'm gonna put overdub the hi-hats. So this is one way of making your own kind of trilling kind of hi-hats that have in trap. Um, there's another way I can show you later for people who aren't so confident to play in this or are still learning to use push. But if I change this now, we had 16th notes. If I change to 32nd, you get that. And you can even go. So I'm just using the repeat to do that kind of thing. So play it now. And you can just like literally tap that on and off. Hit record, practice it a few times, hit record, and then I can just overdub it. So I'm recording now, yep. so I can go. And that'll just keep that pattern now. If I want to, I can even put a 30 second note triple on the end. That kind of thing, yeah? 
So I hit record then. You can practice as much as you want and then hit record and just capture the idea. There are other sounds on here you can add to it. I mean, we could spend, you know, like loads of time doing this because uh, it's fun. I and mean, this here is like a little synth sound. This one, when you let go of it, it plays that. You hold it down. That's cool. Hit it one. If you hold it down, it evolves. As soon as you let go. If you want to just... So you would just keep going through. You can duplicate, keep adding patterns. Uh, you can mute parts. You can sort of basically create most of the foundation of one track just using one of these drum racks from here. So there's a lot of scope, that's just one pack. If I just show you what can happen, if I hit browse, play my beat there. If I hit browse, it'll allow me to switch the kit out. Right. So I'll just pick any of the other ones. Try that, it'd be quite interesting. So what'll happen now is all my beats, all my rhythm, Will, will be there, but each individual sound will be different now. Right. That's good. So, I guess it's a good way to audition different kits as well to see how they sound. Yeah, you can mix and match and swap things out, but... Oh, sorry, the kits change. So... So the kicks and snares are quite similar. I'll take it out for a P as well. So I mean, I like, particularly like that sound. So you can just build these up. You, most people will find a certain sound or give them a certain idea and a certain vibe. So yeah, just um, pick a kit, find out what works for you, get a beat down, whether you're actually playing it or you're drawing in the boxes. Um, you just find your way around. And um, also at the top, just one last thing here, you've got um, controls that are really easy to uh, adjust the beat, whether you want to change the frequency slightly, if it's more low end or filter. If I just play one now, if I go back to session, I can go back to one of the earlier ones we did. Try this one there. So this is our session view, which replicates what's on the screen. You can see where you are. And if I, uh, I go back to note mode here. So when I move these. And can all this be automated as well? Absolutely, yeah. So if I duplicate this, what I'll do, I'll duplicate the part and then I can overdub it. So I've right. kept my original, as long as automate is highlighted or pressed yep. there. If I hit record now, it will record. As soon as I let go, it will then allow it to take over. And is there an easy way to delete the automation if you make yep. a mistake or you don't if like it? If you're not it. happy with the automation, you see it's moving there. If I yep. hold delete down and I just touch that and it'll say, um, return, to, uh, right. return it to default or deleted it. And you got the undo button as well. Yeah, any mistakes, undo. Two great buttons there, delete and undo. Cool. So if, if you make a mistake, it's quite easy to backtrack. So you showed me how you can cut up a sample and you put some drums down. Do you want to show me some of the other sounds that are included? Yeah, sure. Th this one is from the sort of bells and mallets part of the pack, which is um, the sort of percussive sounds that you hear um, in you know some sort of hip hop and, and trap styles. And um, We've made it quite tweakable. So initially, we've got this kind of thing, which is kind of probably more good in sort of techno or something. It's kind of a short sound. So what I can do, I can start to open the release of that. And straight away, you can hear yep. a bit more of a sound. Um, for those people who haven't seen what I'm doing, this is the other, um, haven't seen Push 2 before. This is our note mode in any of the kind of instruments, which is more like a kind of keyboard idea. Um, it's set to a scale so that basically I, c I can't play a wrong note. And the, um, we're calling this lime green, would you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a lime green. So this green. kind of lime green, these are the, uh, your root notes. As a kind of guide, you can play this way. Or you can play this way. There's different ways of finding your way around. Right. So these are all your root notes. So I use that as a kind of reference as the tone. The actual scale we're playing at the moment is... E minor, so I set that to match right. the, the first sound I was using. Um, but don't let that worry you. It just means you can play in key, worry more about playing in time and the right vibe than actually the notes you're playing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we've got this. And what I can do, I can start to adjust. This is a filter built in there. So what's happening is I'm moving this uh, on the screen in Ableton and sort of under the hood, it's moving 
uh, a filter that's been grouped together in one of our instrument racks. So if you know what it is, you can go in and have a look. Otherwise, you can just use this and you know keep playing music and it will actually adjust this. So this is like the filter in this case, which kind of opens up the sound. You hear more frequencies, it dulls the sound as you go down. So this one's also as well, you've got some sort of reverb and chorus. If I play my beat from before, So I could just play a pattern. I've got my fixed length set to two bars. So as long as that's on, if I hit record, it's gonna make a two bar pattern for right, me. Right, okay. So I'll just keep going for two bars. And when I let go, it will just carry on. So I'll capture the idea. And it'll just carry on playing. So the idea now, I think, yeah, that's okay. If I press new, I can do a new one now. And it's got all the backing track, what I've just played is already there. I can add a new one. And just keeps playing. Yeah. So I, I kind of wanted to go on then. I should have changed the, uh, the fixed length to extend it. Uh, you can turn fixed length off. And if I hit record, I can just keep playing and playing. When I finish, just either hit play or record or stop it. And then it will just capture what I've done. So there's different ways of recording it. I, I particularly like that one for the notes mode because I kind of feel my way around it. But um, the idea is you've got a sound that you can add onto your beat and you can adjust it to get the right sort of tonal characteristics you want, just to get the right vibe. I've, I've said that quite a lot about getting the right vibe, but this kind of music's about just getting all these sounds to fit in together. And I think it really l lends itself to that. Now you did that in real time, but I'm guessing you can step sequence all of that as well. Yeah, sure. Because I'm uh, not that good at playing. Okay, yeah, well, you know, I just kind of figure it out. But yeah, if I hit layout again here, you can see it changes to melodic sequencer. So if I just press a new one underneath there and on the screen in Ableton Live, it will make a new clip and then I can populate that. So just like the drums where you could choose bars and beats, same kind of thing. I'm just going to select this. And what you've got now is I've got it in 16. So basically right. I've got... Two, uh, two screens are needed because I've got eight boxes going yep. across. So in order to get one full bar of 16, I'm gonna split it into two. So this one is the first half of the bar. And this is now your uh, tonic or your root note. So if I go like this, it's quite low that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the octave up one and then I'm gonna make it even higher than that. So it's gonna be quite chimey. So if I go this, And just like the drums, where you could turn them on and off, same sort of thing. But you can also do... Right, okay. And that's the first half of the bar. So if I do this now, and I'll just do a really simple pattern. If I do this, you're gonna get beats one and two, three and four. So press them both together, so you've got... So if you like that, you can keep it. I can either duplicate and add more to it, or I can press new and do another one. And again, you can actually uh, adjust all these parameters. You can record them, you can automate them. So you can start to get something really working and it, in pretty much no time, you can just keep sort of jamming with the track, find out what works. Make sure you do lots of duplicating, lots of new, and just get new ideas down. And as I mentioned before, you can just edit, edit it all later. Because that's the really interesting thing about this. We've only added three channels, and we've already mm. got a song pretty much. Yeah. And every time you're creating new clips, you're creating these new arrangements and these variations. So very quickly you can find that you're making music and you've, you've yeah. got a song. I think that's the idea. You can actually, um, we've stopped just to explain a few things, but this could be done by yourself. You can press play and there's no need to actually stop playing. Just get your ideas down. All of these ideas are captured on Ableton Live session view which is sessions, your jam session. Um, at the end of this, we record it on your sort of timeline, which is what most people, whichever platform they've come from, are used to, just the timeline. Eventually, all the ideas will end up there. But right now, you're in this position where if I just hit session, you can see we've got these. If I just stop them from playing by hitting a blank one, this was our original pattern. 
And then one we just did there, if I hit that. So, you know, I would sort the timing out on that one straight away, but that was the first one. I'll keep that one. Simple. Yep. And then the drums. And then if I hit mix over here, just while we're over here, I can balance the sounds if it's too much. Mix should go on. If I want some reverb on this one as well while we're here, um, I go to sense, press this one, which is, I know it's reverb on this one, and then this one. I mean, it already had quite a lot of reverb on that one anyway. You can hear just a little bit of it there. So I could see that um, MIDI clips are part of this new part that you've created. Do you want to show me how people would use them? Yeah, sure. Um, in this instance, um, MIDI clips kind of give you another way of looking at creating beats. Um, so I'm in the Beat Tools pack here. And what I'll use, I'll just take one of the beats. And this is one that I tried before. Um, so when you click on these, you get a preview and this is actually what you're listening to. So this will be uh, that particular kit using the, the drum racks from earlier. And if I double click it, it will load that kit and that beat as well. So I'll just keep the volume down there. So if I double click this, that's what it looks like. If right, I press okay. play. So you can see where each kick and snare is, see the, the kick drums at the bottom. So you can actually see what the beat looks like. Um, also, you can use the push to see it as well, but in this case, you can see where everything is and maybe you can kind of de deconstruct it a little. So in the case of this one, we've got this piano. If I just put my uh, MIDI preview, that's that one. So what I want to do is I want to temporarily mute those. Now I can actually just select them like this. And rather than delete them, I'm just going to hit zero, which right, okay. de um, deactivates them. So they're still there. And if I change of mind, if I press zero again, it will reactivate them. So zero is a, a nice shortcut to use to do that. So if I press play again now, I've got just the groove. And all I want to do in this case is I want to change the, the kick and the bit the basic groove. I like the kind of swing to it, but I think those kicks, I can do a bit more with them. So in this case, I'm going to select the kicks there, and this, I'm going to press backspace instead of zero. So I'm going to delete them. So I'm going to go over to the push, and now what I'm going to do is I've got the, the drum rack here. Now this is also another layout. This is your normal drum loop selector. If I press layout again, you've got 64 pads. Now in this case, not all 64 pads are being used, but rather than the 16, you've got an extra eight on top, which um, the piano was at the top, which we just muted. You've also got strings. So you can do that as well. I'm not going to use it for that at the moment. What I want to do is I'm going to get the, the beat and play it. So there's no kicks now. So I want to put the kicks in. So I'll put the metronome on just so I know where I am. Turn that down a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I want to play the kicks. I'm going to use the repeat from before. I'm going to put it on 16th notes, but there's kind of a shuffly feel to it, which is kind of really important to this style of music. Which so, that currently doesn't have. It's very static. Yes, it's quite static. So if I, that's without the shuffle, it's really straight. So I'm going to put about 40%. And what will happen now is, so you can see the grooves working straight away. So I'm going to hit record and go. And it's kind of got that, that sort of rolling feel to it. I'll take the metronome off. And I can also add the hi-hats as well. So if I, so I'll delete what hi-hats are currently there. So put repeat on and then it, the, the swing is still there. I can use that, 42. So I hit record and I can just jam along with that. So it's actually recorded the swing that I've put onto it. So if you look at the clip on the screen, it's there. That's the actual swing. So rather than having to program that, it's kind of helped me to do that as well. So using these MIDIs is kind of like this is a, a building block. You can chip away, add, replace. Um, you can even load a different kit now on top of that, and it will do the um, different sounds. But um, just to show you, this is another version of the uh, Roadmung. If I pick that up there, all the sounds are going to be the same. 
but then the MIDI is going to be different. So you can actually see it's quite different. It's got different um, rhythms to the piano. The hi-hats are totally different. So we try this now. So it's quite different to mine. Yeah. If I play this one next, that's mine. It's just a different feel completely, but the kind that you would hear in this kind of music. So I find the MIDI is a great way to visualize what's going on on the computer. If you're used to that, it's a great way to start. And then if you have a push, you can then translate that, you can add to it. And it's just a great way to kind of chip away at something that already exists and then make it your own. The, the whole process is, is equally as valid as getting samples and cutting out the right bits. It's just another aspect. I think this pack brings that to it. I guess it's really good for beginners as well because they can see exactly how these beats are constructed. Yeah. You can see where the, the MIDI notes are placed and totally. it's great for the way for them to start creating very easy and quick variations. Yeah. I think that's, the, that's the, uh, the good thing about it is you can have access to literally the, the beat tools and um, as you said, see how they're created. Okay, so thanks for watching this overview of the Ableton Beat Tool Pack and thanks for joining us in the studio today, Simon. Pleasure. This has just been a couple of features, but there really is a lot more to create and experiment with here. And as always, if you'd like to learn more about this pack or any of the other Ableton products in the range, then visit the Gear for Music website. Thanks for watching, guys.